I'm looking forward to that performance. She has got such a cool vibe. Stick around for that performance a little bit later on. But right now, here in the Mother City, we are no strangers to the ongoing global water crisis. Now, just a few months ago, Cape Town was on the brink of becoming the first major city in the world to run out of water. Now, even though we've uh, been lucky enough to have some decent rainfall recently, that doesn't mean our commitment to saving water should end. Now, our next guest has taken on the challenge of getting people involved in the water crisis conversation. Now, ultra-distance runner and and avid water advocate Mina Guri has set out to run 100 marathons in 100 days to raise awareness for the global crisis. She joins us right now here in the studio. Mina, thank you very much for joining us. Um, what a feat, 100 marathons in 100 days. That is incredible. Um, thank you very much for joining us. How did this come about and, and exactly uh, how does it work? Uh, take us through the, the, the logistics. So I decided um, that I wanted to do something to raise awareness about the water crisis. I've been very worried that even though in places like Cape Town, in my hometown in Melbourne, we understand what it means to have to live without water, in the vast majority, mm. especially of big cities around the world, people turn on the tap and they expect that water comes out. Exactly. What is what we know. Yeah. yeah. But we have no idea that actually water goes into everything we use, we buy and we consume every day. So even just right now, the water that went into making the shoes that you're wearing, the pants, the great shirt, the whole outfit, the coffee that you drank this morning, all of that took more water to make than all the water you have drunk in your entire lifetime. Wow. So even if There's you're a thought. Yeah. So even if you're in a place like New York City and you turn on the tap and water comes out, but you want to buy a wine that came from Cape Town or you want to buy a wine, awesome wines that came from <laughs> South Africa, just saying, um, you have to understand that like, you are connected to what is going on in those other places. Yeah. And I had no idea that water is a, such a scarce resource. And I found out that yeah. by 2030, less than 11 years from now, experts are predicting that there will be a 40% greater demand for water than the supply of water available. So those wines that you want to drink, the clothes that you want to wear, the power that you want to use for your computers and your life, all of that is at huge risk. So I wanted to do something about it and I'm not a runner, uh, I'm not mad about running, and, uh, but I decided I was going to use my feet and my body to go out there and show what a water crisis looks like. Yeah, well, you are definitely making a splash with what you are doing, so to <laughs> no speak. No pun intended. No pun intended whatsoever. Now, you started on the 4th of November, already managed to complete 62 marathons. I mean, how you, you mentioned that you're not a runner, but I mean, how do you go about preparing your body for something like this, for something as, as extreme as this? Because as you say, you're not a runner. Um, your body obviously needed to adapt it. Yeah, so I trained really hard. I can imagine. Um, so I had to do, I'm old too, like I'm 48 years old, so I'm no little spring Youngster chicken. Youngster, man. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I feel about 120. Um, <laughs> I'm sure after completing one of those, yeah. Most of the days my team thinks I'm about four years old. So, you know, <laughs> swings and roundabouts, right? Um, so I had to do a lot of gym work, a lot of running, obviously, a lot of swimming, a lot of biking. Yeah. But the thing that actually takes the most time in the preparation for this is not learning to run. It's putting together all the logistics because every place we go, we pick because of its link to the water crisis. And that's why I'm here in yeah. Cape Town, to show what it means to confront day zero. We went to Beaufort West, which is a, a town that's literally run out of water, yeah. delivered containers of water in these big five litre units to families who literally have no water coming out of their taps. And it was yeah. an extremely confronting experience, and one I want to share with the world. Absolutely, and, and I'm glad you're doing it because you're getting that conversation started. I, but I need to ask you this as well. So, unfortunately, you picked up quite a serious injury. Uh, you, you, yeah. you, you mentioned you broke your leg yeah. at one of these. Did it happen during one of the marathons? Yeah, so over a period of the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, suffering from a lot of pain. Um, and my team said to me a number of times, Mina, you're hobbling, you're leaning. By the end of last week, I could barely walk even... I'd taken out my walking sticks. I never use my walking sticks. They're, wow. like, for emergencies only. And uh, and I'd taken out my walking sticks. My arms were aching from wow. holding onto these sticks. So I was literally holding, holding onto them for, arms, yeah. for life. And I realised on Friday when I was looking at a really slow, gradual hill down, and I got stuck halfway down the hill because I couldn't put weight on my leg, yeah. and I thought, I've got a problem. So I went to Christian Barnard on Saturday morning, and they did a scan... And they found out that I have a stress fracture in my right femur. Mm. 
Um, and not just one doctor, but multiple doctors came in to visit me. My mentor, Lewis Pugh, came down to the hospital and sat with me and he said to me, you've got to listen to the doctor. I'm there, of course, being stubborn, like, the water crisis needs me, Naturally. water needs me, I've got to keep going. Yeah. And Lewis sat me down and he said to me, Mina, you need to listen to me. Yeah. Always you need to listen to Lewis, but okay. <laughs> and I said, okay, okay, boss. And he said to me, you need to make a decision right now. Are you going to campaign for water for the next 38 years? Or are you going to campaign for water and break yourself in the next 38 days? Exactly. And what are you going to do? But I mean, this is what you've done. And you, you're calling on the public right now, just very quickly, to get involved, to help you log kilometers, to, to finish this challenge. How can they get involved? So what was amazing in that, like, that was one of the darkest moments of my life. And what happened is that people organically started to offer online, on social media, to do miles for me and this thing has blossomed and over the last couple of days we've logged multiple marathon equivalents from people all over the world from Asia, India, Hong Kong, Australia, Europe, Africa, Brilliant. United States and so now this has grown into a global movement and I think it's the, the, solving this water crisis is not just about me, it's about everybody. So the thing I'm asking everybody to do is to help me while I'm recovering until I can get back on the road to help me to log my miles. I committed to 100 marathons in 100 days to show what it means to be 100% committed to solving yeah. this global problem. So if people want to help me, I would be incredibly honoured and privileged and humbled for that to happen. All I need, want people to do is to do some miles. Doesn't matter how long, doesn't matter how fast, walking is okay. Take a picture, selfie, we have a tradition of selfies, selfies. On, this on this expedition, we always take selfies. Take a selfie, log your miles and hashtag running dry. And if possible, please at me, at Mina Gooley, M-I-N-A-G-U-L-I, so that we can, I can say a personal thank you of gratitude. Brilliant. Mina, thank you very much. I mean, thank you very much for undertaking this challenge as well. And it's also great. I think it's great getting the public involved. So go that hashtag once again. Hashtag running dry. And my Twitter handle and my Facebook is at Mina Gooley or Facebook is at Mina Gooley Water. There we have.